Welcome in to the latest episode of Betting the Pitch with your host, Real Underscore G Warner. It is super late, as always. Uh, this is the Tuesday, November 26th recording for Champions League Match Day 5. Uh, I am the Real Underscore G Warner on Instagram, Patreon, Twitter, and on YouTube. My best bets here today on these soccer podcasts are 13 and 3, an incredible 81%. We're going to try to keep that streak alive. I didn't say I could do it, but Juventus with a cover this weekend, huge for. Uh, them and of course trying to find some momentum into this Champions League window but um, a lot of matches to come go to go through the entire card Tuesday and Wednesday figure out a best bet for each day which I'll then combine to a portion to the end of the show uh, for the ultimate best bet trying to improve to 14 and three currently 13 and three year to date as I just said um, we'll also mention the my I'm very appreciative of new subscribers on YouTube and of course Patreon subscribers I'll shout you all again um, later in the show, but uh, it's time to get into it. It's super late, so let's get started. We'll go to uh, Tuesday in the early window, two matches at 1245 Eastern time, as I'm recording now from South Carolina. Um, as you can see, my mom's pans behind me. Um, it's the holiday weekend here, but uh, no days off, as uh, Bill Belichick likes to say uh, in the European soccer calendar, at least until Christmas, which is ridiculous. But uh, that's, I guess, another whole thing. Uh, we'll start with Slovan Bratislava. They are hosting AC Milan, currently Slovan Bratislava, a two-goal underdog at home with more juice, over-unders three and a quarter. And it's just very heavily to over, probably going to see three and a half in this matchup. Uh, Slovan Bratislava have not looked like they were at the level of this competition really at all this entire time. Um, but they have somehow found a way to, uh, I guess, make it here. So uh, why not do the best you can while you're in the competition? Um, I don't know clearly that that's enough to get involved here. Uh, Milan with a goalless draw at home against Juventus, as I mentioned, the quarter goal underdog winner uh, to improve from 12 and three year to date to 13 and three year to date on these episodes. But um, I'm not necessarily sure that there's a lot for Milan. Uh, I mean, are they going to win by three goals? It feels unlikely. The Slovan Bratislava certainly has found ways to lose by big margins, where I think a two goal underdog on the road at Girona played a really tight match. And uh, I think we're a late penalty save away from not even covering. I think they pushed in the under hit uh, on a two nil loss on the road. Now it's at home a little bit different. Uh, Milan certainly will be looking past Slovan Bratislava expecting to win, uh, which is a big, big, scary thing to do when you go away from home. So uh, I'm very interested got to say in the underdog getting two full goals of insurance, uh, certainly big difference between these, these two clubs uh, in terms of talent expenditures, uh, famousness, whatever that word should be. Um, I, I think the my biggest interest right now is under three and a quarter, which should be getting to three and a half before kickoff on Tuesday uh, evening in, in Europe, but Tuesday afternoon here in the United States. Um, I think my biggest interest is, is that under, but I, you know, every second I talk about it, I'm, I'm getting more and more interested in potentially playing the side as well. Um, I think it's really not, I'm just not really a huge fan of, uh, of, or don't have a lot of expectations for Milan. They've not looked very good um, this season, and I don't really see that changing. So uh, give me Slovan Bratislava plus two, and also under three and a quarter current number right now in that early matchup. Other matchup in that early window, Sparta Prague host Atletico Madrid. Currently Sparta Prague, a three-quarter goal underdog, down from a full goal of insurance plus one uh, when I was initially looking at lines. Um, very juiced right now on Atleti. It's probably going to jockey back between one and three quarters of a goal. Um, as for uh, the total on this one, it's two and a half. Juice pretty heavily to over. We might see two and three quarters, um, though I got to say at this point, I don't know who's backing. Um, honestly, I don't know who's backing uh, any sort of Atleti over. Uh, they somehow hit it this weekend uh, with two late goals after falling behind to uh, an early Alaves penalty. Um, maybe that will suddenly get them inspired, but um, Atleti just seem like a great fade right now. They're not a good team. They're not good away from home and they still have a, a huge premium based on Cholo Simeone, their manager, or maybe all the money that they spent on signings that have not been delivering whatsoever. Um, with that said, I think I want a full goal of insurance because Sparta Prague have been one of the lowest possession teams in all of Champions League. That's going to put a lot of pressure on them and defending even in front of a big uh, east side, I think, of Prague crowd. Uh, someone quote me on that if you uh, if I'm wrong, because I probably am. Um, but ultimately, I think Atleti are a very ripe favorite, especially away from home. you got two big favorites in this early window away from home that um, have had big, big problems this season. So uh, I'm pretty I'm pretty interested in 
and playing both underdogs, both at home. And I think it works out really, really well for both of them. Um, and I guess I'm going to be uh, very, very interested in that early window on Tuesday. Uh, to the next match, we'll go to, uh, I guess it's the big window. And I, I'm separating for the ultimate best bet coming end of show uh, at the real underscore G Warner on Instagram and on YouTube for their short one minute clips. Of course, uh, this podcast network, Betting the Pitch podcast is available under that name on Spotify and on Apple Podcasts with, of course, uh, all YouTube stuff coming through at the real underscore G Warner. Uh, we do have an NFL podcast coming out on uh, Tuesday night, plus uh, another college football round on pregame.com. So plenty of podcasts, even though it's a holiday week, we'll still find a way to entertain you. Um, and maybe you can turn your friends and family, especially your young children on to sports betting content from the real underscore G Warner. Um, so that first match in the second window, the, I guess the, the second window of Tuesday, um, we're going to do Wednesday in a second. So stay tuned for that. We'll start with Barcelona hosting Saad Brestois, uh, Spain against France here. Um, and number currently, Barcelona, a two and a quarter goal favorite with more juice on Brest away from home. Over under is three and a half, just more to the over. So um, there are some, I guess, I've been backing Saad Brestois uh, a lot this season, I got to say. Um, they were certainly one of the teams I had highlighted as, as one that would struggle Um of out of nowhere finish in a Champions League place in, in French League. Uh, um, and, and that's been a, a huge run for them that probably was going to end up. Um, they didn't do a ton of signings. Uh, they had spent a ton of money. They're usually one of those clubs that are trying to fight relegation in France. Uh, but it's been a great year for them. They've done very well, I think. Uh, balancing, they got off to an incredible start. Though an easy schedule certainly has helped them in Champions League. Um, but they're they're not like flaming out or in, in big relegation trouble in, in France. It's certainly not going great for them. And certainly they're not at the same heights that they were last season. Um, but I, I'm still very interested in Stade Brestois. I think they play a defensive brand of football. They have a really big, tall striker in Ludovic Ajork, who is just um, a really tough guy to defend. And uh, it allows them to, to focus more on defense, kind of let him fend for himself up front. Um, and he's a giant for heading the ball out on set pieces. Uh, Barcelona are going to play short corners. That doesn't really matter so much there. Uh, that big forehead and big, tall giant of a man up front probably doesn't matter too much defensively. Um, but Barca have had some defensive problems. We saw them lose at Real Sociedad heading into the uh, international break. So um, things aren't perfect for Barca so far. We'll see uh, what they deliver here. But as a two and a quarter goal favorite, it's gigantic. I mean, Champions League. Um, these are all good teams that are in this this competition, uh, but still the big names are, seem to get bet a ton, or at least they're uh, priced in a way that tries to make as much money come in on the other side. Uh, that usually happens to me. It's been a good start to the Champions League season. I probably should have my record up somewhere nearby that I can find. Um, we'll see if I can scramble for that while I'm uh, doing this podcast, amongst other things, while trying to balance, literally balance uh, phones and iPads so I can keep the, uh, the numbers coming. But uh, I'm interested in this one more. I think it's in, in Stade Brestois getting two and a quarter goals. The three and a half total is gigantic as well. And that correlates. So it's hard for me to keep it off the list. Uh, I think Barca certainly can name their score and, and have that ability, but it's been a, a bit inconsistent heading into the international break. And we'll see what that looks like with not really a huge crowd support behind them. And they're going to be facing a side that's going to defend this whole time. Uh, pretty much. I would expect Brest to defend like they do for PSG which in the past has always been very, very defensively trying to protect their net as much at all costs, really, and just sacrificing offense to protect their defense. Uh, I think that's a good setup for under, and especially for getting two and a quarter goals, because that's requiring a lopsided win. Barca can certainly do it, but I, I just feel like this is a good team that they're playing against, and it's certainly not priced that way. Moving next to Bayer Leverkusen, they're hosting Red Bull Salzburg. Currently, Leverkusen, a two-goal favorite. At home, uh, total is three and a half in this one. Juice is split both ways in the total. A little bit more juice on Salzburg at the moment. Uh, Leverkusen were uh, awful this weekend. We're a two-goal favorite at home to one of the worst clubs, smallest clubs in the German Bundesliga, who somehow found their way into Conference League last season, qualified, and have been, done very well in that competition, but have pretty much not been scoring any sort of goals in the German Bundesliga. Well, until they went to Leverkusen, who decided to give two easy goals away early and uh, 20 minutes in, it was a two-goal underdog was up 2-0 on the road at Leverkusen. Uh, I figured my under was in big trouble, but didn't expect my underdog to give up five consecutive goals to lose by a, by that last goal, uh, 82nd minute, I think it was, from Granit Xhaka from top of the box. Uh, but Heidenheim basically ran out of gas. Their uh, center backs were just looking like they were so slow, like they were carrying pianos in their 
uh, or they're tugging a piano trying to catch up to some of the faster players in the world. Um, I don't know that's necessarily uh, a Leverkusen thing that they've suddenly turned it around. I, I'm going to say I don't believe that. But Red Bull Salzburg will certainly be uh, on the chopping block because they've been really bad in this competition. And I don't know that there's much I want to do here. I mean, two is so much bigger than I made it. Um, and the three and a half does feel pretty high for a total. But Salzburg, they've from the past, they've always wanted to be very attacking, very front footed. They've not been able to really do that in this competition. They haven't been very good at defending either. So there's not a lot of that I want to get in the way of there. So I think I'll skip along to the next matchup, which is probably the biggest, uh, at least that we've covered in this episode so far, might be the biggest of the entire weekend or, or midweek, I guess is a better way to say it. And that's Bayern München hosting PSG Paris Saint-Germain uh, in uh, the south southern Germany. Uh, currently Bayern a one-goal favorite with all the juice over under three and a quarter. Juice pretty heavily to over there too. Uh, probably see three and a half in this one, which is a gigantic number. Certainly PSG can, can definitely score enough to get there. Uh, and you could probably say from a uh, Bayern perspective, they could get this total themselves. Um, big issue for me, though, is Bayern München with their high line. Uh, how does that that high press do? Because ultimately PSG are going to try to possess the ball. It's a Luis Enrique style that he ran for Barcelona in the past and also for the Spanish national team. Um I think that's a really good way playing keep away from Bayern München that makes the point of confrontation away from the PSG box and I think it also makes a, a big impression or it just makes the 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 game feel like you can kind of try to exploit and expose a Bayern München high line which can certainly get pierced um, I think I'm more interested in the PSG side than the total um, just because I don't know that PSG need a low scoring game to cover here um, it certainly would help of course goalless would be an amazing results probably the, the most unlikely of of, of matches uh, going on in this window but i guess with two competitive teams versus uh, a really dominant side like a, a, a milan going to slovan Bratislava, maybe that's a a, a, a more or, or less likely goal is draw because there's so much expected of one team but you know this could be one of those matches where psg nullify a bayern munchen side and it makes a, a one goal of insurance which looks like it might even climb to one and a quarter before kickoff even that much more important. So uh, I'm pretty pumped about that. I got to say, I think that's a, a big interest point for me. Uh, and we'll see if that ends up as a potential ultimate best bet coming end of show. Uh, I just tweeted out that I'm live on, on YouTube. So uh, if anyone is up at this late hour, please come in, check in, throw any questions you have or things you want me to cover. Uh, feel free to throw that in the comments whenever you get a moment. Um, so now I think I'll go to the next matchup as I have put down PSG on my list. I just want to make sure, is it possible that I did grade my Champions League to this point in the season? Because if I had, I'd like to use that as my most recent update. Uh, I'm not sure. It seems like I see 23, 15, and 3, but that might have been a... Hmm. And that was probably through 23, 15 and three, I think it was through uh, match day three, four, three. So this would be the fourth match day that I'm, I'm and we're recording for the fifth as we speak. I don't think that I've gone back and updated my record so far. Thank you to all my Patreon subscribers and a lot of you that have, have been doing that for me. I really appreciate that. Uh, so there are a lot of plays out there. Certainly, and if you're if you're looking to try to get some volume, certainly check out at the real underscore G Warner on Patreon, patreon.com slash real underscore G Warner. Best spot for all my plays, leans right up across all sports, including a ton of college basketball. And honestly, the NFL has been driving me insane lately. The, the beats have been rough, but um, I feel like I've been making good bets and we'll see if that um, turns around hopefully sooner rather than later for another good playoff or end of season and then into playoffs run like we had last year. Um, and check out the NFL podcast with Andrew Shore Schnicker. Uh, that'll be out tomorrow night as well. Um, all right. I feel like I've lost my train of thought a little bit. So let's get back over here. Uh, and I'll start, I guess, we're continuing on, on this later window on Tuesday. It's Inter Milan hosting RB Leipzig as uh, another big matchup of, of big clubs. So RB Leipzig, they're second in, in the German Bundesliga, or at least uh, entering last weekend. But uh, it's not gone very easily for them or gone well at all in Champions League. Inter are currently a one and a quarter goal favorite at home uh, in San Siro. Leipzig a, uh, got more of the juice right now, though. Uh, I don't know this 
potentially we'd see this number fall back to one, but worst case scenario, it shouldn't get lower than the full goal of insurance. And that certainly will look a little bit more comforting if you're pot potentially going to back RB Leipzig here. Total is three in this one, just slightly more to over. Um, Leipzig had been a really good under team, but the defense has been a little bit lacking. They've been struggling with injuries, uh, including their goalkeeper, uh, Peter Golacci, but he's back. Uh, and I expect RB Leipzig to be very, very determined in this matchup on the way into Milan. Inter have been trying to possess the ball more this season. They're certainly uh, okay with playing a counterattacking style, but that's really what Leipzig want to do. They're going to jam the middle of the field and try to spring counterattacks as much as they can. Inter will have three center backs in position to try to thwart that uh, and try to use their wing backs and push them up the pitch to create, especially with Federico De Marco, who just doesn't even seem like a defender at this point. Um, but that certainly could leave uh, Inter a little bit more susceptible to counterattacks. Inter have been great. I don't know if they've conceded a goal yet in Champions League. If I heard that wrong, please forgive me, but I want to say I heard that. Um, Leipzig, on the other hand, they're desperate, but I feel like still a, a road draw at the Spanish, uh, or excuse me, at the, that's not the Italian capital because that's Rome, but at the, one of the biggest places to play in, in Italy will certainly be looked at as a good result and might be important for Marco Rosa to take some pressure off his players and maybe even himself. Um, I, I think Leipzig getting a goal in a quarter is also bigger than I made it. So I'm interested there. Uh, I'm pretty much just making my lines off of um, basically as soon as I see these lines for the next week, I've, I've made lines for the next upcoming week because I don't want to overreact too much to, to recent results. Um, we'll see. And I feel like that's been better this season, but uh, we'll see how that goes and try to create that end of year. Uh, but I think under three and a quarter is also interesting because I think Leipzig are going to be very determined to try to keep Inter out, knowing especially that they've been struggling to hold leads. Uh, I'm just not sure Red Bull Leipzig will get one, which makes that one and a quarter a little bit less interesting. But I think still being above a goal uh, does give Leipzig a good chance to lose and cover, which would be a, a really dream scenario, I think. Uh, moving next to Manchester City hosting Feyenoord, and this has so much to talk about in this one. Uh, Manchester City, a two-goal favorite, with more juice over under three and a half, just a little bit more to under. Uh, Feyenoord are going to have a really tough time going on the road to uh, the best club in the world that's won four English Premier League championships in a row. Um, but they're not on that pace right now, uh, losing and getting throttled 4 nil at home to Tottenham Hotspur. Uh, on Saturday is amazing. And I'm really kicking myself for not playing Tottenham, I got to say. Uh, but they were selected as one of my best bets, uh, at least my favorite from the English Premier League. So um, try to keep that streak going. But pretty much what I've been touching on there is, is touching. Uh, it's basically it's turned to gold. So we're going to try to keep that going and make sure you stay tuned, stay with me for the end of this show. Uh, listen to that ultimate best bet, which will also be in a one minute format on uh, YouTube and on Instagram at the real underscore G Warner. Uh, but back to this one, uh, fine order, two goal underdog. Um, I don't know how I can avoid playing that. Manchester City just haven't won forever on a huge losing streak. Maybe they are able to turn this around, but they're going to win by three goals just to a, a fine order side who are uh, did lose on a slot to Liverpool, but ultimately are still a really important and, and have been playing well in Champions League. Plus, when you think about that Manchester City have Liverpool on the road away in the English Premier League coming up, you could see some big time rotation or at least um, earlier substitutions if the lineup's still intact. Uh, I think a lot of things point to Feyenoord playing really well here. Champions League doesn't really matter to me uh, in this type of format. Uh, Man City have already won it. They want to get back on track in the Premier League. They have a huge matchup coming up to Liverpool this weekend. Yes, the, the rotation of Manchester City is great everywhere. Uh, but I think fine order are, are better than this line suggests. And uh, certainly the, the form table is going to favor fine order in this one. I'll lean to under three and a half. I think I'm less interested there. Uh, but ultimately, I, I think Manchester City is going to struggle to score goals uh, as they have all season. And uh, we'll see if uh, Erling Holland can uh, take his international form with Norway uh, back into his club side. But I just don't really see it even at home in a, a big Champions League match with what they have to look ahead to this weekend. Uh, I'll move next to Sporting Lisboa hosting Arsenal uh, coming off their victory over Manchester City in the last round. They get to be at home again, which is huge. Uh, quarter goal underdogs are Sporting Lisboa, Sporting Clube de Portugal. Uh, juice is split there. Total is two and a half. Juice very heavily to over right now. Um, Arsenal is a road favorite and under has been hitting like every time. I see no reason to get off that, that track. Uh, Sporting Lisboa certainly could score too much like they did against Manchester City and, and end up killing an under, but paying out a, a side. Uh, I think from just from from a, a Sporting Lisboa's perspective, of course, it's weird that they lost their manager, Ruben Amorim, to 
uh, Manchester United mid season when things were going really well in champions league. But of course uh, I think everyone expl- understands that move and uh, we'll see what sporting Lisboa can do to kind of replace him. But um, I, I think playing the, the, to me, the, the club that's playing well and uh, as a home underdog with what will probably be a huge environment, just trying to support the new manager that's come in. Uh, and I think Arsenal, I mean, they were pretty fortunate to get a three nil victory at home this weekend. I think it was against 10 men and honestly weren't that impressive to me uh, did rotate, but I still, I, I just don't really see it as uh, Arsenal looking like a team I'm afraid of at this point. So uh, give me the home underdog. And I like under two and a half in that matchup as well. Last but not least, before we close out Tuesday, give an ultimate best bet selection, which will come up end of show on that uh, ultimate best bet. Uh, young boys burn uh, from Switzerland. They're hosting Atalanta. And I believe the young boys uh, manager just got lured away, or maybe that was Storm Graz. Uh, anyway, Austrian manager has moved to Hoffenheim. Uh, young boys have not been good in this competition, uh, nearly escaped the draw at home to Inter but conceded late and then uh, more bad things have happened to them since then. Currently young boys, a one and two, excuse me, a one and a quarter goal underdog at home with almost a, a ton of juice on Atalanta, probably climbing to one and a half, which is a big price for Atalanta, but they've been playing so well. Totals three in this one, juiced all the way to over um, could see three and a quarter probably will. I don't see a reason for Atalanta to not get bet here. So we probably see bigger numbers coming uh, down the line. Uh, and I think we should, uh, I just don't know that I really want too much to do with uh, this matchup. And so it's easy for me to skip as it's super late at night. And I'd love to get to the Wednesday card and get the heck out of here. Uh, so for my best bet on uh, November 26th, Tuesday, no- November 26th, I'm going to go with a Paris Saint-Germain getting a full goal on the road at Bayern München. Uh, certainly a scary number to put out there, but I like the full goal of insurance. I think PSG, especially after a late concession to lose at home to Atletico Madrid, will be very motivated to uh, keep this one tight and potentially try to go for uh, a low scoring win on the road in München. Uh, move to Wednesday. Uh, before we get into that, I just want to plug the NFL podcast coming out Tuesday night with A underscore Schnicker. Um, that will be out and we will uh, be bouncing back from an 0 2, unfortunately, uh, in the NFL this past weekend. Um, but moving to Wednesday, we have Fran of Esda, Red Star Belgrade. They're hosting Vafel Stuttgart on uh, Wednesday, the 27th. Stuttgart coming off a victory over Bochum this weekend. Not an easy one, 2 0, uh, under hit easily there. Uh, so Red, Red Star Belgrade currently a three quarter goal underdog at home with almost all the juice over under is three juice all the way to under. Uh, and I feel like that's another spot that I'm, I'm looking suit guard. I've been good in this competition, maybe not getting the results they deserve from how they've played. Um, and they're going to front of Esda, who's not really going to threaten them to at least possess the ball. I would think the Red Star Belgrade and uh, the Serbian champions would be very, very aggressively defending. Uh, I don't think they'd be pushing out too much forward because they know that they've been punctured before and get punished every time they do. I think we see a low scoring matchup, Stuttgart controlling possession. And I think Stuttgart will see, uh, I'm I'm wondering how they're going to handle two competitions when they had a really good run in the German Bundesliga last season. It's not been going well in the league this season uh, and they need to fix that. So I wonder if we start seeing some champions league rotation because they're, they really should have their eye more on the Bundesliga prize so they can make sure they qualify for Europe next year as well. Uh, so I'll put Krenvesda on the list under three. I think I'm more interested until I get a full goal of insurance. And I don't think we're going to get that uh, before kickoff on Wednesday afternoon. Uh, Sturm Graz then hosts Girona in a, a pretty lopsided matchup for La Liga side going on the road to Austria. And I don't think Sturm Graz are playing in their home stadium. I think they are they're in a different stadion, as they'd call it in Austria. Uh, currently, Sturm Graz, a half a goal underdog at home with all the juice over under two and three quarters, just more to the over. Um, Girona, just, they're still so injured. I, I don't trust them to score goals ever. Um, Sturm Graz have definitely some naive, just not really good footballers or, or very veteran at a high level. Um, Girona will certainly be able to exploit that. Um, but I think rather than playing home underdog, which I'm less interested in, I think I'm more interested in under two and three quarters and would love if this number can climb to uh, a nice three would be very, very uh, a round three would be great for that extra push potential. We'll see if that comes before kickoff on uh, in the early window on Wednesday, the 27th of November. Now to the late window, we'll start with Aston Villa hosting Juventus. Currently, Aston Villa, a quarter goal favorite at home. All the juice on Juve away from home, though. Totals two and a quarter, juice all the way to over. I think you want to wait on this one and try to get that under two and a half or at least the even money right now under two and a quarter. Probably won't get worse before the the match kicks off. Uh, Juve are certainly an all-defensive club. Aston Villa has been good defending at home. But, I mean, Aston Villa defense, I've been pretty loud about it. Uh, uh, 
Diego Carlos is way past it. Pau Torres is not a defender uh, worth Premier League level. Uh, and the, the high line defense that Unai Emery is playing is honestly suicidal. I think I'm more interested in Juventus getting a quarter of a goal right now than I'm in that under two and a quarter. But I think I, I like both because Juve basically play both those directions. And I think Aston Villa are really going to be seriously concerned about their defense. Um, Juve have been up and down in this competition as they are everywhere, but I do think a, a low scoring match is, is something you can usually expect from Juventus. So I uh, like under uh, two and a quarter, but also like that uh, quarter goal underdog away from home at, in Birmingham. Uh, we'll move next to Bologna hosting Lille, currently Bologna, a quarter goal favorite at home, all the juice and then some on Lille away from home. This is probably falling to pick them, but I'm going to hope that some Bologna money comes in over under two and a quarter juice all the way to over. Uh, Lille, I think, are a far better side. They've played much better in this competition. Bologna can't score goals. They've been really struggling in the Italian Serie A to do that as well, despite bringing in a very attacking manager, um, which is kind of like a a leopard literally changing or a cheetah changing its spots because they were all defense last year. Manager left for Juventus and bring in an offensive guy. And their defense has been better than I expected, but their offense has been very, very quiet um, and also sold a lot of players. That probably explains some of it. Um, I think Lille as an underdog is going to be really hard for me to resist. Uh, I lean to under two and a quarter because I think that plays into a, a poor scoring, low scoring home favorite that doesn't really deserve it. Uh, I think that plays to under and I think underdog as well. Moving next to Celtic, they're hosting Club Bruges, currently Celtic, a half a goal favorite at home, all the juice and Bruges away from home. Over under two and three quarters, juice all the way to over. I've been pretty impressed by Celtic so far in this competition. I mean, getting a win to Leipzig at home, I think before the international break uh, was was a big step for them. Um, also a goalless draw at Atalanta was huge. Um, they've been looking a lot better than Celtic have ever looked in international competitions, I must say, or in the continental ones. Um, Bruges on the other side, they're also good. Uh, I think this is going to be a competitive matchup. I like Bruges as a big underdog, and I think a half of a goal uh, on the road at Celtic is, is too much. Uh, it's very juiced at the moment, probably falls to the quarter, but I don't know that'll keep me away. I think Bruges will be very competitive here, so I'm going to put them on my list, getting that quarter goal, and I lean to that under two and three quarters as well because I just feel like that number should be a lot lower. Um, and we might see three, and that would be great. And a, a very, very... Uh, important push would be offered there, and I'll certainly look to take that. Dinamo Zagreb then hosts Borussia Dortmund, who are uh, looking ahead to uh, uh, to Bayern München coming in in their Classico this weekend. Uh, well, they got to go to Zagreb, Croatia first, uh, where Dinamo Zagreb are a three-quarter goal underdog at home. Uh, slightly more juice on Borussia Dortmund at the moment. Over-under is... Uh, three and it's juiced about even, but one cent more to the over. If you're looking for good soccer juices, certainly check out Bet Online Sports Bet at AG. There are links in the podcast promo codes on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and on YouTube. Go get some free money from those casinos and make sure you follow my links, and they'll hopefully pay you out and give you some a little bit more on top. Plus, it might even hit me with a little money there too. So, uh, and if you have tried to use it or something doesn't work, feel free to slide in my DMs at the real underscore G Warner on any social media platform. And I'll help you get uh, registered at either bet online sports bet at AG or really anywhere. I have an account. Um, so with that said, uh, Dean was grab only getting three quarters of the goal. I don't know that I trust them enough, but certainly Dortmund has been struggling so bad away from home that uh, as soon as we get a plus one, I think I'm in. Um, so until then I'll certainly be waiting, but uh, it definitely feels like, Dortmund are, are going to be looking ahead to buy on. So maybe that three quarters of goals, the max will get. Uh, I think the total is probably, I mean, a three, it's also very interesting to me. Uh, a lot of unders and a lot of totals uh, under underdogs and unders that seem to be my way. And uh, certainly nothing is keeping me off that. My feelings for this card this week, midweek. Uh, next we go to Liverpool, hosting Real Madrid. Maybe this is the biggest name matchup uh, on the, on the list, but uh, certainly PSG Bayern München was, was pretty uh, real as well. Uh, but Liverpool currently a half a goal favorite at home to Real Madrid. A little bit more juice on Real Madrid. Over under is three, juice all the way to over here. Um, Anfield will be rocking. Uh, anytime Real Madrid comes in, that's a big, big deal for them. Uh, Liverpool have been more possession heavy than I think anyone expected. They've been less uh, aggressive at attacking or, or, or pressing up the pitch like they were under uh, Geigen Presser, uh, extraordinaire. Uh, Jurgen Klopp. Um, Real Madrid have had a lot of problems this year and haven't looked like they've been returning on the big signing of Kylian Mbappe. Um, I think my interest here is uh, certainly to Real Madrid getting a half of a goal. I think it's a, a really big price for them. They haven't been playing great, but uh, the number is the number. And I think we've seen Carlo Ancelotti that he's not someone we'd really want to uh, 
a second guess in this Champions League, though certainly performers have not been up to his standards and lofty ones so far this season. I also lean to under three, though, because I feel like Liverpool is still graded as this great offense, and I don't really see it. Uh, moving next at Monaco, hosting Benfica. Currently, Monaco, a quarter goal favorite at home. Uh, almost all the juice on Benfica away from home. Over under is two and three quarters. Use more to the over. Um, Monaco is 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 tough to gauge because they are able to score goals kind of out of nowhere, but they really struggled to find them. Um, they've got some pretty immature players out there as well. Uh, a really weird game with, with Rems. This, or I think it was, or maybe it was with Brest. Yeah, I think it was with Brest on Friday. So that helped them to get an extra day off, I guess. But going on the road to, or excuse me, and then hosting Benfica is a big, big step. So they should be in pretty good rest situation. Um, Cortical favorite probably makes sense. I think uh, under is probably a little bit more interesting under two and three quarters to me than the Benfica side, but uh, Benfica have been impressive. I, I think they are, are very talented as always. And this feels like a, a pretty close match. So Monaco at home, um, let me, let me kind of rephrase where I was going. So Monaco have been kind of all over the place. And I, I guess it was what I was starting to get into is a reason why I would back them. But as Joe Dollar and all you will know, I am not a favorite player. So uh, Benfica going in to try to get a result in Monaco against a nothing crowd at the Stade Louis II is not a bad idea, especially uh, a goalless draw or one scoring draw, however it would come. You'd still win half of your bet on Benfica plus one quarter. So uh, I'm interested there. I think I'm into under two and three quarters, but I'd love to see this hit three before kickoff as that I'm trying to be a little bit more uh, um, discriminating and make sure that I try not to discriminate in life, but certainly against totals when you could get a three. Uh, certainly be looking out for that. Uh, last but not least, we have PSV Eindhoven hosting Shakhtar Donetsk from Ukraine. And this one is Eindhoven, a one and a quarter goal favorite at home with almost all the juice over under is three, just a little bit more to under. Uh, and Eindhoven have been good this this competition and they have a huge crowd behind them. That'll certainly help. But Shakhtar Donetsk are used to playing on the road. Um, that's what they do. They're not really as talented as they've been in the past because a lot of their best players have been lured away. Big signings like Mihailo Mudric to uh, Chelsea and others. Uh, I think Eindhoven will certainly dictate how this game will go. And Shakhtar Donetsk, I think, will still be a counterattacking side and try to defend, especially away from home. They're used to fighting away from home. They've got a great spirit. Uh, so I'm interested, I think, more in under three in that last matchup than I am in the uh, one and a quarter, though I just don't know that PSV Eindhoven are that much better than a lot of clubs that are out there. So uh, it's time for the ultimate best bet. Before we get into there, I, I promised that I would uh, shout out some of my loyal subscribers. I've done that on a couple other podcasts I'm doing, the soccer podcast from this weekend. Um, that was also super late night and maybe wasn't as exposed, so I want to make sure I give all of you, uh, they're due. So patreon.com says to real underscore G Warner. It's where you can get all my plays, leans right up across all the sports that I do every night, even at 2.30 a.m. Eastern time, which I will be putting those out and then going to sleep right away. Um, but on Patreon, thanks so much for your subscribers that are all out there. New ones, Brett Mangigian, you've been there before. Uh, Joe Dollar, of course, uh, I guess you decided to re-up. Thank you for coming back for your umpteenth month. Joe Susek, Jeff Chapman, appreciate all your support. And then the YouTube subscribers, new ones there. Honey Freeman, John McLemore, Wager Enterprises, or maybe that's why Hair Enterprises. Uh, Mustafi, Mustafa Shukri, Nick Restrepo, JC Truth. Thank you all for coming in and uh, hopefully you like what you see. And uh, if there's a better way to do it or something like that, please feel free to comment on this post and I will try to make it a little bit better for all of you out there. Um, as for the podcast schedule this week, as I said, it's weird with the, uh, the holiday, but college football should be coming on with uh, at Big East Ben, especially with some weird start times. We're try still trying to schedule one. We'll do that. Um, the need for screens that would be the college football podcast uh, hosted by pregame.com. We'll also do the need for seeds college basketball podcast. I don't know that it makes sense to really talk about Maui because uh, the matchup seemed to be decided and doesn't give much time for people to get out there and bet things. But of course the UConn going down today, that was a big deal. Um, certainly if you want more shout and we will try to give it to you. Uh, and then of course the NFL podcast with Andrew Schwarzenegger should be planned to come out on Tuesday night as always. At least I haven't heard if that's changing. Uh, we got a big weekend of stuff, so uh, make sure you stick around and stay interested in that. Uh, for now, I think it's time for the ultimate best bet. Let's see if I can get my extra crazy studio set up. And uh, it's actually not that crazy, but uh, that's what we do when we're away from home uh, and trying to do these things all on the road. Uh, so I guess without further ado, it's time. Let's do it. 
Hey, this is the real underscore G Warner on Instagram, Patreon, Twitter, and on YouTube. This is the ultimate best bet for soccer, which were 13 and three, 81% year to date, trying to improve to 14 and three. Never thought I'd do it, but it'd be nice to have a football score as my record this season. From Tuesday, November 26th, my favorite bet is PSG Paris Saint Germain, a one goal underdog on the road to Bayern München. And on Wednesday, I like Real Madrid at Liverpool under three goals. Uh, for ultimate best bet, do end of show. Of course, you want to check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash the real underscore G Warner. All my leans plays right ups across all sports, college basketball, NFL, everything right now. Oh my God. Of course, the video just died. But anyway, uh, for my ultimate best bet in this episode, 13 and three year to date, I'm going to go Real Madrid under three goals, as I think that's the way to go. And we'll figure out if I can find a way to put this on Instagram later. So thank you all for tuning in. We'll uh, get this out and uh, up tonight. And then uh, hopefully you all can listen to it on your travels or getting on the plane or something like that. But thanks for your support as always. And hit me at the real underscore G Warren if you got any thoughts.